Hi guys, now before we go down this rabbit hole, I just want to say I'm an English teacher, I'm not fucking Tomb Raider. Welcome back. So before we get into it, I will quickly say that there will likely be spoilers today and this is going to be just as much an analysis today as it will be a review. But if you've never seen this film before, I think you are likely to come away from this video feeling like you do want to check the film out because I am going to be mostly positive in what I'm saying. So if you don't know, this is a film about six extreme sports enthusiasts they like to meet up and go kayaking and mountain climbing and potholing and maybe a little bit of wee sports from time to time i don't know i presume that they all met when they were at uni or something and then they just carried on with their little social circle into their mid to late 20s i don't know but in this film they are going potholing in the appalachian mountains and when they do they run into all sorts of trouble they're all women in this group and this is where this film is going to score its first point today because I absolutely love the fact that this, this is an all-female cast, not just because I love women, it could be six men and I would love this film just as much. There's something very realistic about having a group of people who are all of the same sex. You don't often see that in horror movies. The mirror image to this film, of course, would probably be John Carpenter's The Thing, which used all men in its Arctic uh, research station. But in most horror films, you get that mix of men and women. You know, it's like a, like a little formula that has to be followed in the writing room, just so you can have a few young couples who are more interested in whether they've brought condoms along on the trip, as opposed to whether they've brought extra batteries for their flashlights. You know, the, the, their priorities are on getting laid rather than preparing for what awaits them you know so we've got all women on this trip and i absolutely love this film for that now there are three key elements to the descent which i will point out uh, straight away so firstly we've got the humanoid monsters that the characters eventually run into at the back end of this film i guess they are white or grey, they're, they're definitely blind because they've spent their entire lives living under the ground in the darkness, they don't have functioning eyes they're very simple in the way that they've been designed but boy are they effective and genuinely very scary. The second key element in this film is the potholing, now if you've ever considered going potholing after you watch this film you might not want to do it anymore because honestly a lot of the most frightening material in this film is just concerned with potholing and has nothing to do with the actual monsters. We see people trying to wriggle through tight passages and they cross over gaps and just try and survive in, in these horribly dark caves and there's, there's cave-ins happening at various points. It just makes the whole sport, if you can call it that, just look absolutely horrifically terrifying. I would personally just never want to do it. The other element, the third element, is the human drama side to this film. There is a fascinating subplot in this involving uh, two of the girls. So the main character, Sarah, she arrives at this story having lost her husband and her daughter about 12 months previously. And she's just starting to move past that uh, when we come to this film. One of her friends, Juno, was having an affair with her husband at the time that this guy died and the affair never came to light. Now both Sarah and Juno are on this trip and it just feels all the way through this film like this secret knowledge of the affair is like a ticking time bomb that's going to go off at any any moment. It's, it's brewing and simmering under the surface, it's just ready to come out, you know. So we've got all these different factors in the mix in this film, from the various dangers to what, what's going on in the, in the characters' personal lives and it's just a really, really satisfying brew. It was directed by Neil Marshall. He also did a film called Dog Soldiers around about this time of his career, which has a lot of notoriety. It's quite a popular film. I've never seen it myself. This guy does have a little bit of a reputation as, as someone who's, whose career never quite fulfilled its early promise, but I will add the disclaimer, I've not actually seen a lot of Neil Marshall's films after The Descent. I've just mainly watched this one on repeat every few years. In terms of the actors, um, I guess Shona MacDonald, who plays Sarah, is the most famous actor of those here but even she's not that well known I, I can remember seeing her in a film called Howl a werewolf film a few years ago uh, the girl who plays Juno I've seen her in the second Descent film but 
Shona McDonald's the only one of these girls I've seen in anything other than a Descent movie. The title of this film definitely has a double meaning. It's not just about the descent into the bowels of the earth. It's also about the descent into a psychological frame of mind, which is so negative, it might be impossible to, to come back from, to rise up from. This film is more about Juno for me than Sarah. I think the title of the film is a reference to Juno. As a character, Sarah, when she gets to the start of this story, she's actually on the recovery. There are so many moments where you, you look at how she's laughing and stuff and you think, yeah, she's, she's slowly getting over what happened to her a year ago. She still has the occasional flashback and, you know, but generally she's on the right trajectory. She's on the ascent. She's not on the descent. But Juno, on the other hand, is just completely on the descent. Like, so clearly she was in love with this guy, um, the husband of Sarah. The film doesn't tell you whether she was malicious in having this affair or whether it was more a case of the guy coming onto her and taking advantage of her in a certain vulnerable situation. We don't know. But ultimately, this film, come the end of it, is saying that it, it doesn't really matter the circumstances of the affair. The fact is Juno had it and therefore she is condemned because of it. I think most people would be fine with that. But clearly she was in love with this guy and she's never been allowed to grieve in the same way as Sarah. So Sarah, she would have had her friends rallying around her and family members and stuff and she's allowed, to, she's been allowed to go through the proper grieving process, which is why by the time this film comes around, she's on the right track to recovering. But Juno, she's had to keep it completely bottled up, all those feelings she had towards this guy. She's had to keep these feelings cooped up inside. She's never been allowed to grieve properly. And that's why when she comes to this film, she is not healing. She's going the other way. She's just getting worse. She's becoming reckless. Like, it seems to me like she has a reputation amongst this group of girls for being like the star of the group, almost the best of them when it comes to all these extreme sports. And yet she's getting really careless and silly with her actions in this film. She takes the group to a, uh, like a cave system that isn't mapped and she doesn't leave the proper paperwork with the authorities so they could properly be rescued if needs be. So she's being very sloppy on that front. And also it's, it seems to me like she doesn't mind the idea of the affair coming to light even after all this time. Like that like part of her just really needs it to come out in the open so she can deal with it properly. You know, like she carries this necklace thing around with her with a, with a message on it. And if anybody sees that, they're going to know what it's about. So why not just leave that at home for 48 hours? Why do you have to come and hang that around your neck where anybody could just grab it and have a quick look at it? And also there are certain moments in the dialogue where it's like she's giving verbal clues to the other characters that she had this affair. Like at one moment she says to Beth, who's a very, who's got a very keen eye for, for spotting this kind of stuff, I think, um, Juno says something like, oh, Sarah wasn't the only person who lost something in that accident. You know, real, just a cryptic kind of comment, which can have a double meaning. And you think, why give out these little clues if, if you don't want knowledge of the affair to come out eventually, you know? But so, for a lot of reasons, I think Juno is on a path in this film, which it, it it's just leading to leading to her inevitable destruction at the back end of this film. She's very much on the descent. It's it's a it's a tragic tale. Now, I used to hate the ending to this film. That there are two endings to this film. There's the British ending, which is the sad ending. Everybody dies, and then there's the American ending. Although I'm not I'm not sure even Americans can get access to that anymore. I'm not sure, but the American ending originally. Uh, Sarah at least got out. Now, I used to have a little bit of a snooty view towards this American ending. I used to laugh at it and go, ha ha, you Americans can't do anything properly. The, Amer the, the British version, that, that ending, that's the proper ending. It, it's tragic, but, it, but it's a proper horror ending. But watching the film this time, I, I've started to come around for the first time in almost 20 years that the American ending might be the best, just because of the fact that it does suit the character arcs better. Having Juno die, but Sarah get out, it just feels like the right thing, the right conclusion to Sarah's tale here, that she bursts out of the, the side of the mountain and she's completed that journey of recovering from what happened to her. Now, logistically, the British ending still makes a little bit more sense because one of the biggest horrors about this film is the fact that they just seem to be going so far under the ground that you can't envisage them ever finding their way back up to the surface again. It's like 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 some maze or something. They go further and further down, and 
it's hard to imagine at one point during this film that they could ever find their way to the surface again. So this idea that Sarah would just randomly f stumble into this convenient slope which leads outside of the mountain is a little bit tough to swallow. But in terms of the character arcs and the story, it, it does actually work more to have Sarah escape. So I'm kind of split now. I'm kind of like, I, I don't know, it, one or the other. But I, I, I'm certainly not where I used to be with this, where I used to heavily prefer the British ending. So Sarah and Juno are both excellent characters. I love the Irish girl. I can't remember her name, um, but she's so funny. She's like this, uh, she's, she's like Juno's protege and she thinks she's like the next big thing in extreme sports. And she's, she's talking down this trip as if, it's, as if the caves are gonna be full of handrails and uh, gift shops and things, as if it's beneath her, you know, but irony of ironies, she's in way over her head and it turns out she's the first to fall because of a really stupid rookie error that like, none of the other characters would make. But I just love the character. Her, her lines are just so funny. Beth's a good character as well. She just feels like a very real, believable person. And even the two blonde women in this, uh, who probably make the least impact, they're still good characters. They're still well fleshed out and uh, very believable as people. And it's cool how they sort of stick together throughout this film. But I, I liked them as well. Like All six of them, just very, very strong. I have to admit, this film really gets me on an emotional level, even after numerous watches. The soundtrack helps with this. It's a really powerful little theme tune that this film has. It's, it's fairly one note. I mean, it doesn't really change all that much throughout the film, but it gets to you. It, it starts out quite early when, Sarah, when, when we're being shown the tragedy involving Sarah's husband and daughter. And it's always kind of there, just popping up now and again throughout the film. And it's, it's also there at the end, but it adds to this film so, so much. This film is so lucky to have this soundtrack. There are great films out there that don't really have much of a soundtrack, but The Descent isn't one of them. It really has some powerful music going for it. I love how this movie is paced. It doesn't need to give you a couple of kills quite early on, just to keep you entertained. No, we, we keep the characters alive for a long, long time. You get to know them and then when things do go wrong, it, it's all the more effective as a result. I, I particularly like the Evil Dead type cabin that they all stay in the night before that they go on this trip beneath the ground. I don't know if that was a deliberate thing. I, I almost feel like one of them should have found a mysterious book in the corner and then just tossed it away or something. But the film is nicely paced. And I like the fact that the technical side of potholing, caving is really shown up in this film. Like. In other films like this, you might just get the characters swinging around really easily as if they're like tots at a jungle gym, you know, but no, we don't get that. The camera lingers a long time on all the tough things that you have to do when you're trying to traverse across a ceiling. You know, we get to see all the bolts getting put in and we, we spend a bit of time on this, but it's important just to give it a certain weight, you know, just to show us the viewer just how difficult it is to learn all this stuff, just to show you how, how much of a technical thing it is. And it just makes you admire the characters even more that they, they are very, very proficient at all this stuff, as well as having day jobs like being a teacher and a doctor and, and, and stuff like that. And they're all really good at this. There's only the Irish one who is lacking a little bit, but that's just because of a little bit of inexperience. She's still got all the technical know-how of how to, you know, drop down from a great height on a rope and, and put pythons in the wall or whatever you call them. But you, you will get a, a strong appreciation watching this movie of just how difficult this hobby is. And I, I just like the way that it's depicted. The caves look really good, though I, I was even more impressed by the, the, the way that they've been storyboarded, how uh, like early on we get a fairly easy tunnel for the characters to go through and then we get an absolutely horrible one they have to go through where they have to go underwater and then it's all kind of compacted and apparently when they were filming this, they only had a very, very small amount of cave to actually use. And they even had to use some like polystyrene plastic walls or something and just have uh, the lights shine on them in a certain way to make them look like proper caves. They didn't have much to film in, uh, supposedly. In the movie, it looks like this massive, complicated cave system that runs for miles and miles. But no, they were they were filming in, in quite a small space. And it's, it's just impressive how when you're watching the movie, you would never actually believe that. I watched a film the other night called Cube, and supposedly there's like 36,000 cubed rooms in this building in the film, but actually they were only filming in two. 
and they've just changed the angles around and the colors of the rooms. The descent is sort of like that, but using like little caved sections, but very impressive what they did with this. On the whole, I just think this film is absolutely terrific. I don't really have any negatives. The only slight thing I'd say is that it's a, it's a shame that there are these two endings. Um, you know, other great horror films in the past, uh, think of something like Halloween. Like if there were two endings to Halloween, one where Myers dies and another one where he falls off the balcony, it, it wouldn't be as good as what we have now where we get the one classic ending that everybody knows and loves. I think when it comes to the future of The Descent being released on like Blu-ray and 4K and stuff, it would be nice if you could get both versions of the film just so people can make their mind up about which one they prefer. In my case, I've not even fully decided yet. But one thing I didn't mention about the, the depressing ending earlier is that another reason why that particular ending works is because you could look at it as Sarah going to be with her daughter in the afterlife, you know, that whole thing with the, the birthday candles that you see throughout this film. But... I don't know, on the whole, I, th I think you can still see arguments for both, but to my mind, the movie is an absolute masterpiece. It's absolutely phenomenal. Kudos to the guy who requested that I review this film, because it, it's always a pleasure to just talk about films like this. Before we wrap up, I'll quickly show you the version of the film I've got for this. I have a DVD copy of The Descent, a two-disc edition. It's quite old now, and actually when I put it on, I was a little bit worried that it wouldn't be able to cope with my really big TV that I've got nowadays. That happens sometimes when I get a DVD out of the cupboard that I've not put on for years. Sometimes it, it just, uh, the new TV I've got just can't actually cope with such old DVDs. But in this instance, they must have been planning ahead for the future quite well because uh, I got a very nice picture with this that, that filled all of the TV, I think, or at least like 99% of it. That picture, by the way, um, of Sarah looking really feral and you know eyes focused it's such an amazing part of this film when Sarah just goes to town on the uh, on the creatures it's just brilliant well, th there's a scene where there's like a cave filled with crap and mud and sludgy stuff it's like a big pool and she ends up in it and there's like a little family of cannibals or whatever you want to call them and she takes them all out and it's just brilliant watching her <laughs> just do her thing uh, just go crazy on these creatures juno gets a few good moments towards the end the, the actual mechanics of the horror that you get in the last 15 20 minutes there's so many good moments of action and high tension moments like when one of the creatures puts their face up close to sarah and she's looking at it through a, a camcorder there's another moment where the two sisters are just lying on a rock and one of their watches goes off and it, they're panicking, trying to throw the watch away and stuff. There's, it, there's just so many I could, I could go into. It's really, really great. The special features on this, there's loads of them. There's two commentary tracks. I think I've only seen the one with the director and cast. And it's literally the entire cast, I think, apart from the woman who plays Juno. Um... The other track is from the director and crew. So Neil Marshall did two tracks for this. I've not seen that one, uh, I don't think. There's a making of feature, extended scenes, outtakes, storyboard comparisons, stills, galleries, cast and crew biographies, a trailer. This came out back in the day when all DVDs had tons of extras. It's, it's a bit more of a struggle these days to find discs as packed as this. But yeah, this is a cracking copy of the film still, even in 2023. I will come back and review The Descent 2. It's not going to be quite as positive as this review was, but uh, I haven't seen it in a long time. But just for, the, just for this channel, I will go through it again. I, I've got it on DVD. I will drag it out and sit through it. But for now, let's get to the Bag of Terror and find out what score I am going to give The Descent. So we have one, two, three... Four, five bloody axes out of five. This is a masterpiece movie for me. It's one of the best horror films of all time. When I did my top 100 films of all time recently, I'm pretty sure this film came very, very high. Like, I can't remember exactly where, but I'm quite confident it would have been top 20, top 10 somewhere like that um i'm sure of it and bear in mind this top 100 it wasn't just horror films as well it was like top 100 films of all genres that's how highly i rate it i think it's absolutely fantastic and a terrific achievement right i'll leave it there for today i'll be back soon my next review will be a film called treehouse intriguing until next time cheerio <laughs>